I'm Ian Freeman. I'm the host of Free Talk Live. It's a nationally syndicated radio program. We talk about liberty and peace and cryptocurrency on the radio on like 179 radio stations from coast to coast in the United States. I host uh, the show most of the time. Mark also. Uh, and uh, I do a lot of other things with activism in New Hampshire, etc. Yeah, my name is Mark Edge, and I've been hosting the show for about 15 years now, and it's, uh, it's great. It really beats, uh, beats having to do real work. Hey, man. Hey, I, this is real work, my friend. <laughs> this is the real work right here. What, what, brought you, um, what brought you to the Liberty Movement, and what was your, I guess, your uh, metamorphosis into this? Okay, that would have to go back to when I was a teenager, and I tried smoking pot for the first time and found out that the war on drugs was a lie, and uh, that was like my opener into you know, learning about the libertarians at that point and then learning about the non-aggression principle, which of course we all learned in, pre in preschool. And so you know, now it's just, can you apply that in your adult life? And I could, so I became a libertarian and eventually we started this radio show and now it's on all the stations we're on. We moved to New Hampshire in 2006 as part of the New Hampshire Freedom Migration so we can concentrate uh, libertarians in one place and actually have more success. Yeah, um, so I started the show being basically a Rush Limbaugh ditto head, and it took a long time for listeners to call in asking questions and making uh, suppositions and talking to for me to sort of pop the rivets on statism as, uh, as things went. You know, I had a lot of concerns about what the world would be like if people had more freedom. It's a scary idea, but ultimately it came down, I came down to the conclusion that no matter whether something works or not, that people should be able to try. And the government, the United States government, all governments in the world are monopolies. And they don't like people trying new things. We're never going to get anything better if people don't get to try new things. What do you got? You got the choice of uh, basically a monarchy, autocracy, dictatorship, democracy. All of these ideas are at least 3,000 years old. There's no new government technology? I mean, nothing? Well, there is. It's just the government won't let you try it. I mean, the technology is as old as Locke and Thomas Jefferson and these people. It's just that it's never been implemented because the, the allure of government power for the politicians, people just like us, it's too high. And they love that monopoly. Can you explain uh, what, the, what the great freedom migration is and what's going on in New Hampshire right now? So, Before you start, can you yes. your mic? You found it, sure. Yeah. Pull it out a little bit. Yep, thank you. Uh, so the, the New Hampshire Freedom Migration has been going on for more than a decade uh, with thousands of people now who have moved, picked up their lives, their families, their businesses, uh, and moved themselves to New Hampshire, where New Hampshire is already the freest of the 50 states. So if you go and you look at the Cato Institute study of the freedom of the 50 states, New Hampshire is number one. Uh, so it's a good place to start if we want to make a place the most free place on the planet, right? So you go with the already freest place, and then you get a bunch of libertarians to move there, and you make it more free by actually having success in different areas. Like, so some people are interested in politics and they're running for office. Some of them are running as Republicans and Democrats. Others running as Libertarians. We even had two Republicans and one Democrat this last year flip to the Libertarian Party. So New Hampshire, you know, the Libertarian Party nationally has been trying for 40 years to get somebody elected. In New Hampshire, we've got three state representatives who are libertarians, which is three more than every other state combined. So, <laughs> state like, reps? State reps. Like our Congress or Senate? Uh, state reps. So, state oh, reps, yeah. state representatives. So, you know, we have 400 total state reps in New Hampshire, which means it's uh, a very small number of people per representative. So, it's the largest representative body. There's, I could go on and on. In fact, there's a movie that I helped co produce called uh, 101reasonsfilm.com. It's the 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire. These are reasons why people like us would be really interested in what's going on. Because New Hampshire is almost like the best kept secret of the liberty movement. Like, some people know it's there. Some people don't even know where it is. And <laughs> it's, it's a small state. It's easy to get around. And it's easy to have an effect on the political system there. But even if you're not into politics, you know, I was telling you guys about Derek J's victimless crime spree. There's been some epic civil disobedience that has happened there. Wow. Some very visible, like, cop block and people going to trial on stuff. And, you know, there's just been a, a long history of really just cool activism that's happened there. And the more people we can get to move, the better off we're all going to be. Because libertarians, in a lot of cases, are alone. You know, you guys have been talking with people here. We were just out there, and one guy was telling us he didn't realize that other people really felt the same way as he did. And that's because most libertarians are very lonely where they are. They may have friends, but their friends probably aren't into liberty. 
And so they don't have the ability. Coming to these events helps them connect, but eventually they always end up going home and you know, there's not really much happening there that's very exciting. In New Hampshire, there's always something going on. There's always something you can get involved in. Now, is this, uh, is, is this freedom movement universal throughout the state, or is it concentrated in certain areas? Well, I mean, obviously people are going to move where the jobs are, right? So they're going to go to Manchester, which is the biggest city in New Hampshire, or Concord, or Nashua. You know, the, the places where concentrations of population are are going to attract most of the movers. But there's plenty of woods in New Hampshire. It's mostly a forested, you know, woods state. So if you want to move out in the middle of nowhere and be left alone, it's a nice place to go to do that too. So anybody, you want to move in the middle of the city or in the woods, you've got choices. Um, I just one more question. I wanted to ask you, I know Portsmouth and Keener um, are two towns you guys highly. Can you just like, tell me what exactly is going on in these two towns and why, what makes the Liberty Movement so strong there and what's going on as opposed to, you know, 99% of the rest of the country? Well, I, I think what sets uh, Keene and, and Portsmouth uh, apart is that they, uh, they're activists there, they're working very hard in the cryptocurrency sphere. So both Keene and Portsmouth, you can go and use your phone to buy and Bitcoin or Dash or whatever and you could get, I know you can go get a hamburger, you can get your car repaired, you can walk across the street and get uh, um, go a, pack to, a pack of smokes or a, a drink or a bong, uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You can buy a pipe with, with You can get your, hair, get your hair cut, get, uh, you can go to the nursery and buy some plants, I mean all kinds of things. We've worked very hard to have, um, you know, penetration in the marketplace uh, for these uh, crypto Currencies. It makes it real. Yeah. And you can actually buy a thing that you feed yourself with. You're feeding yourself with cryptocurrency. There aren't very many places where you can do that. And both Portsmouth and Keene have a higher concentration of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency accepting businesses than even big cities like San Francisco. If you go and you Google top 10 Bitcoin cities, San Francisco is always listed as number one. And the way they figure that out is they look at uh, coinmap.org and they look and they see how many businesses per capita population in San Francisco wins. But they're not looking at Keene and Portsmouth because we have like a factor of four or five times more concentration yeah. than San Francisco does. You can literally, in the downtown Keene area, go in, get yourself a pack of cigarettes or a newspaper or whatever from a little corner store or pipe or whatever, walk across the street and then buy lunch with cryptocurrency. You can then go down and pick up a pizza and make that later. There's a take and bake place. You can, you know, there's tacos in the next you know, few towns over. Um, and there's a little shop that sells local goods that are made by local people in New Hampshire. They'll sell you things for all kinds of cryptocurrency. There's there. a there's barbecue two, joint? Yep, th that's right. Um, there's two cryptocurrency vending machines in town as well. I mean, for a town of 20,000 people, <laughs> you've got two cryptocurrency vending machines. There's, there's, there's two in Philadelphia. There's two in Philadelphia. Which is a exactly. million, like what is it, million million million. Million? Yeah. Exactly, right. <laughs> New Hampshire, the state of New Hampshire, doesn't even have a million and a half people. It's maybe 1.4 million. Mm, right. and and statewide, we've got 10 cryptocurrency vending machines right now. And I think an 11th just opened up in Nashua recently. So the, when the you people are traveling from far away too. Maine, um, New York, uh, Vermont. Maine actually had a few machines pop up recently. So yeah, but, but they, they have traveled there very, very recently. As a matter of fact, many people come from New York City uh, it's such a large metro, metro area. When you're buying cryptocurrency, many cases in the machines in New York City, you're paying 20%. Yeah. You come up to New Hampshire, you're paying 10%. 8, 10. So, it's how, huge. How did this come about? How did this, these movements gain such traction in, uh, in these towns? Was it some sort of fusion with the local governments or was no. it... The governments no. don't like us. Like, uh, yeah. That's what I was getting at. How, cause, cause I, would, I would like this to other people to know how this could be replicated in other parts of the country. Obviously, it everyone can't be. Came so the reason why... Oh, it can't uh, be. Okay. The reason why... Sorry, <laughs> at, at least not at this time. Well, maybe in the, the future. future. <laughs> maybe in the future if libertarianism becomes incredibly popular, it could. But, yeah, but the idea was, you know, I'd been involved with liberty since the late 90s and watched as libertarians were not getting anywhere. You know, 3% in the elections or whatever, in local elections in Florida where I come from. And when I heard the idea of, hey, let's concentrate and then we can be more effective because numbers matter. Yeah. And, you know, this event is a better event because there's 1,500 people, not 15, right? Like, it's cool to have an intimate event, but, you know, if you can get a bunch of libertarians in one place, they can win elections. If they can win elections, they can change the system. You can roll back the war on drugs. You can, as uh, what happened last year, there was a small marijuana decriminalization. We're likely going to see more of that in the future. So you do have uh, to work within the, the system. Try out storage. Okay. I need another phone. Do you have video on your phone? Yeah, but we, at least we got a month or two. 
Yeah, we got mics. So you do have to work work within the system. You're still rolling audio. Is yeah, what you're saying? Okay. So you, we, you do have to work within the system to an extent. I mean, you're talking about winning yeah. elections and, oh, yeah. and voting. And I work people. within the system. I don't have a problem with that. Um, you don't have to work within the system. But you don't have to. No, a lot <laughs> of people don't want to. Yeah, a lot of people are. I'm one of those people. I don't blame you. I mean, when I moved to New Hampshire, I was sour as hell about the system. I didn't want to work within the system. But what people showed me was that you can actually do it with success in New Hampshire. As I was mentioning to you, the state representatives there, there's 400 of them. So when you, they only pay them $100 a year. Okay, I don't know what they pay state reps in, in uh, Pennsylvania, but I bet you it's twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year or something like that. that. It could be more than that. I think it's closer to sixty, seventy, eighty. So you're attracting to those roles, you're attracting the average person. You're not attracting professional lawyers and politicians. These are people who, many of them, they're retired or they have a career. And this is the other thing that they do is to try to, in their mind, make the system better. Now, obviously, we disagree with what many of them say and do, but you can actually talk to these people. I don't know if you've ever tried to communicate with a state rep in Pennsylvania, but I'm betting you, if you ever call them, you don't get to talk to the state rep. You talk to a secretary who then tells you that the state rep's not available right now, but you're welcome to leave a message and they'll be sure that they get the message. Uh, and then maybe you'll get a form letter back or something like that, right, to acknowledge. And they don't care what you think. Um, but in New Hampshire, they don't even have a secretary. They're, there's not even an office for these people. In the state house, the state reps get a locker, and there's not even enough lockers for them. So some of them, I think, have drawers and something or other, but you know, there's like, they're not treated like royalty in the same way that they are in other states, and so it doesn't go to their heads as much. You know, there's definitely still some of them who are into power and all that, but like if you call them on the number listed for them on the state website, half the time you're reaching them at their house. And like their kid will answer the phone and you're like, yeah, can you put mom on the line? <laughs> I mean, it's not like that in other places. No. You can't talk to state reps in other places. And in New Hampshire, they have to have, by law, they have to have public hearings for every bill uh, that happens. Apparently that doesn't happen in other states either. So if there's a bill you wanna go and talk to them about, they have a hearing, you can go and talk to the state reps and express yourself about whatever it is. So the system sucks, it's slow, it's annoying, it's crappy, it's politics, but at least in New Hampshire, you can have an impact as an individual and as a libertarian, and many of them will listen to you. Social change is driven by activism. It doesn't matter whether it's in the system or out of the system activism. People disagree as to what's most effective at any given time <laughs> and for different problems. It's fine, all those things are true, but it is driven by uh, people, you know, these, these, these few tireless souls that are out there getting something done. Not by you and me having a beer and chit-chatting about it. Nothing changes, because, you know, governments don't care about that. They care about those who are out there making noise in whatever way. And if you concentrate those people in one given geographic area, then you will see more change in that geographic area, um, if, as long as it's a geopolitical area. However, if you concentrate people, that means necessarily there's been a drain, a brain drain on activism in pretty much every other place. Right, because we've States. taken the activists from elsewhere. We, we moved up from Florida. That's two fewer activists that aren't in the Tampa Bay area now. The ones that are making a difference there are now making a difference in New Hampshire. There are thousands of people who've moved to New Hampshire now, and that story has replicated itself thousands of times over. Many times when people move, they're that much more committed now that they have moved and they do more activism. So um, that's the difference with what's going on in New Hampshire. And that's why Ian says this isn't replicatable until the success has been had in New Hampshire or, or failure. We don't know. I mean, the success or failure must occur in New Hampshire before it can be tried elsewhere. So would you say that New Hampshire, the success of New Hampshire, could be held out as a tangible model for people to see what liberty could act, how liberty could actually improve people's lives. That's the idea. Inspire people in other parts Hopefully. of the country. Hopefully. We've seen a little bit. We've seen a few laws here and there change and a few ways that the police deal with people change. But at this point, we're, you know, if... if uh, it's still early. Yeah, if New Hampshire was uh, at, a, at a 100 and moving to liberty at a zero, we may have moved one tick. Um, we get a long way, a lot of ticks to go to get to, to freedom. So but, there's a tick closer than you were before, right? Right, I mean, right. South and we were already right a free estate. Tick, 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 tick. That's right, yeah. you know? Um, all the other states are moving in the other direction. New Hampshire may have ticked. We're, we're more likely holding the line, like we're stopping government from getting bigger, 
which already they were doing in New Hampshire because New Hampshire's the, the granite state. It's live free or die, right? You probably heard that, that yes. phrase. And, you know, while to some extent that's just a slogan, it's also, to some extent, the mentality of many of the natives. So when we're moving there, it's not like an invasion or something like that. We're there to back up the people who were born and raised in New Hampshire who, you know, love freedom and they love, you know, guns and they love pot and they love, you know, all kinds of things that a lot of us uh, really appreciate. The, the mentality of the natives of New Hampshire is hard to really express. You know, most people don't know people from New Hampshire. It's a small state, right? They've never been there. They don't know what it's like. Where when you drive across the border and there's a sign that says, buckle up, normally you see it's the law, right? In most states, in New Hampshire, it's like, common sense for all because you can f fling off your seatbelt if you want to cops can't pull you over for that if you're on a motorbike you don't have to well, wear a helmet but you can't get a ticket in many states it's they can't pull you over for uh, not having a seatbelt on in new hampshire right. that's i'm not saying it's, but it's not against the law at all right right but well, this is clear so in many states there are um, it's a secondary offense it's so not even a secondary offense. right so it's the only state in the union the only state in the united states of america where an adult over the age of 18 doesn't have to wear a seatbelt and somehow or another the New Hampshire legislator said, you know, that $3 million Department of uh, Motor Vehicles or whatever is handing out from the United States government, it's just not good enough. Our people can handle it. And we have more compliance uh, with seatbelt use than some other states that have it as a law. Right. Laws don't work when it comes to seatbelts. Right. So there's just these little things that, you know, when you add them up, as I said, 101reasonsfilm.com, there's a bunch of them in there. I mean, we're just, we're doing a very short version, right, of trying to, uh, to point out. But there's just so many cool things that are happening there and that the reason why New Hampshire won, there was a vote years ago of which state should we choose because there were like 10 different states that were low population states where a, a number of people could have an impact. And New Hampshire won overwhelmingly because it was the clear choice. It was the clear best option for freedom right now. And with more libertarians moving there, it's just going to get better. Thank you guys so much. I feel like we got a lot. Of Absolutely. I might, move, I might move to New Hampshire now. Yeah. You should come and visit at the least. Come and visit. Especially when you drive, dude, when you drop that, like, you can go to the woods and then go to the city and then buy your bombing machine. With Bitcoin, like, oh, Bitcoin for sure. Yeah. This dude is dream. This dude is literally my dream. It's a dream. It no really is. Clubs. The whole place. There's one strip club in Manchester, but it's not full nude. Oh well, yeah, I, 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 I like pay for women with love. You know there you, what I mean? you go. That's my thing. Yeah. yeah, it's fun. It's, I, and there's enough in this city. If you go to freekeen.com, we report on some of the things happening there, but there's more activism happening in New Hampshire than we even know about. Wow. Um, if you're in an ev any given area, there's different projects going on. People who are interested in different things. Maybe it's you know, uh, maybe it's making sure that New Hampshire stays one of the most free states with guns, right? Yeah. So like last uh, last year. We had some good political success stories. I'll run through a couple for you if you don't mind. Um, New Hampshire was already one of the best like gun self-defense freedom states, but it's now one of the top three because they now have concealed carry with no permit. Amen. So you don't have to ask permission to conceal carry. They've always had open carry. So if you want to walk around with a you know gun on your hip, no problem. In New Hampshire, it's common to see people carrying guns, average people carrying guns. It's not uncommon. I'll sit in a restaurant, some guy opens his jacket, you can see, you know, he's got a gun there. It feels so unsafe. I've you know, seen people... All those, uh, school shootings in New Hampshire, right? It doesn't They'll really... Back. Yeah, it doesn't know, really yeah. happen out there. Hello. And New Hampshire is one of the safest states as a result. Like, murders per capita, New Hampshire is number one lowest. I so know that you can say as a result. New Hampshire is certainly one of the safest uh, states in the Union. I think that the, the jury is out as to whether or not uh, gun freedom makes people more safe or not. But I do think that um, you, you, but but guns don't um, outlawing guns doesn't work either. Me, right. I think these are non-correlated facts. Personally. Yeah. yeah. So minor uh, decrim of cannabis happened last year. So we got gun, more gun freedom and more weed freedom at the same time. Uh, both signed by a Republican uh, governor. You know, and then uh, New Hampshire's got gay marriage, you know, it's got uh, all kinds of things that it's just like, it's so unique because it's surrounded by all these big government states, right? Massachusetts, Vermont, these socialist places. When New Hampshire's like an England, oasis. They think of socialists. Yeah, it's like an oasis in this socialist uh, place. And uh, there was also the Bitcoin bill that passed last year, which, um, have you heard of the bit, uh, bit license in New York before? No. So in New York in 2015 passed a bill that basically made, made it so you had to give $100,000 worth of fees to the state in order to have like a crypto exchange or something like that. Okay. And it basically drove Bitcoin businesses out of New York. In fact, if you go to shapeshift.io and you live in New York, they'll tell you, nope, sorry, we don't want to do business with you. Um, <laughs> there's websites like that. They just will not do, deal with you if you live in New York because well, of the bit license. Yep. 
And so in New Hampshire, they, uh, New Hampshire state reps formed a committee to study cryptocurrency. A bunch of us went to their hearings and spoke to them and explained cryptocurrency to them. Some of them and already knew. I talked yeah. to senators there at the front of the room. I you know, t testified their senators, and they're saying they had it. They, they knew it. They had it. They had, had it. it. Uh, so, so, so you've got elsewhere? I know. yeah, you've got state reps and senators who are already into cryptocurrency. So they introduced a bill that basically did the opposite of what New York did. New York, by the way, the 50 freest state, so they're the least free state. Uh, <laughs> right. So, so they did a bill that says if you're doing a crypto exchange or if you're doing crypto only to crypto, so not fiat, but crypto to crypto, you are not being regulated by money transmitter regulations in New Hampshire. So there's an exemption that's been carved out in New Hampshire. And of course, some of the crypto people are seeing that and they're like, maybe we should move our business to New Hampshire. So, I mean, it's just going to keep building you know, success upon success, and eventually people are going to hear about what's happening. They're going to say, yeah, we just can't deny it anymore. New Hampshire is the place to be if you love freedom. Wow. And it always was. Well, now more than ever, dude, yeah. Jesus Christ. So can I just make sure I heard you? Yeah. You're saying that if you go Bitcoin to Bitcoin and you will fuck with fiat, that's like almost... The, the government has declared that that's okay and they don't There's a protection. They won't regulate that. They don't even... Tax either? The state government. Yeah. The state government. Regulate it. Yeah. yeah. Um, they, there is no income tax, so the state government wouldn't tax it. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, no state income tax. No sales tax. Laws, but it's not like they're hunting around for what people yeah. are doing. Yeah. Federal agents ain't like lurking through New Hampshire, through the woods, trying to find me my then paying shit with crypto. There are only a handful of states that have no uh, income tax. New Hampshire is one of them. And there's only a handful that have no sales tax. New Hampshire is one of them. I don't know. Are there any other states that ha that don't have both? I think New Hampshire is no, the only state that yeah. doesn't have there's a either. General sales tax. There is a sales tax on the meals if you go out. To there's a meals tax. Yeah. Meals and rooms. But yeah. So I mean, it's not perfect. There's still statism there. There's still a state. But like, even the cops in New Hampshire, they don't kill dogs. Like that's never happened. Maybe it'll happen this weekend. But you know, it ha it hasn't happened yet. You've probably seen all the stories of cops just oh, yeah. blasting away. You it's know. Absolutely no recourse. Yeah. They do that. Oh, it's a dog. Right. And in New Hampshire, that's not happened. Um, they're just, they're a little bit better. I'm not saying that they're good guys, all of them, but they're just not as bad of a gang in New Hampshire. They're more likely, if, you, if you're walking around with a gun on your hip, if a cop stops you, it's because he's honestly interested in knowing what model gun that is. Like, he's just curious to know, like, you know, what are you into? He's not going to do anything to you over it. So, well, it's a neat great. place. I'm so happy here that it's in America. The <laughs> USSA, like, are you kidding me? Hopefully not for long. There's also a burgeoning secession movement in New Hampshire as well. So there's a bunch of us that are like, yeah, let's get out of the United States. And what's interesting is I've done, uh, from that one it's going to be a while, but I've done uh, outreach on the topic of secession because I'll set up like a table at the county fair or be on the streets and just handing out flyers. And when you talk to New Hampshire natives about secession, when they get the flyer about secession, their, their eyes light up uh -huh. and like a smile comes across their face and they love New Hampshire more than they like the federal government. Yeah. And that's a common thing amongst the people of New Hampshire. So I think there's a very bright future for that. I will say that um, you know, New Hampshire is still in the, inside the United States. The United States government still expects its citizens, whether they're in the country or out of the country, to pay income taxes and all those other things. Any other country in the world, you know, they don't expect that. So if you were, for whatever reason, to immigrate to uh, Mexico or St. Kitts and Nevis or something like that, you would find that um, the federal government just wouldn't have the impact in your life that it, that it does as a U.S. citizen. Yeah, well, they tend to leave tourist types alone in these other countries. But to me, I don't want to just stand by as people are being harassed on the streets just because I'm being left alone because I'm a tourist. That doesn't make me okay with the police fucking with some local guy who's, you know, maybe had too much to drink at a bar or something like that. But when I'm here, you know, I'm, a cop, I'm one of the original cop block guys uh, from I'm badge number five, right? Like, so I've been around. I've done a lot. Uh, they have Facebook website. It's been around for a while. But, um, you know, if I'm in Acapulco, and I see the police fucking with somebody, my natural instinct is to like grab a camera and you know pull it out and hold these people. But it's not my territory, you know. Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to make that stand here. And we can do that in New Hampshire, you know. We don't have the same. There's a, there's a lot more that we can do. If you just move to Acapulco, you're just going to try to avoid the state, right? Like yeah. you're not going to. There's not going to be freedom for the people of Acapulco because a handful of libertarians move here. That's not going to happen. Yeah. So New Hampshire, if you want to see a true free place at some point, in my opinion, it's got the best odds, and the more people that move, the better odds will be. 
Thanks, both Thank you guys. Thanks so much. So much. Okay. Can we get Appreciate your it, man. Names one more time? Yeah, yeah. Ian yeah. Freeman. And Mark Edge. Hell yeah. With Free Ian Talk Mark. Live. With Free Talk Live. Where can we catch the show? FreeTalkLive.com. Seven nights a week. Or LRN.fm. Or Little Matter 